Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. In this episode, we'll be looking at trivia surrounding a console we're sure you all love, the Xbox One, or as it's more often called, the X-Bone. When it comes to Microsoft and their ventures into the world of gaming, the Xbox One is not exactly considered the shining success that many were expecting. While it's true the system hasn't failed miserably in the sales department, like that of the Wii U, it definitely didn't match up to Microsoft's hopeful expectations as a successor to the overwhelmingly popular Xbox 360. At the time of this video, the Xbox One has only garnered around half the sales of the 360, though granted, the 360 has of course had a longer period in active production. The Xbox One's sales pale dramatically when compared to the likes of Sony's PlayStation 4, in a market that has grown considerably over the years. The Xbox One does come across as a success, however, when compared to the original Xbox, with almost twice as many systems sold. The system does have other merits, such as the technical virtue of being the most powerful home console for its generation with the Xbox One X, as well as the continued updates to improve user feedback on the console's dashboard and the addition of backwards compatibility with many previous 360 titles. The Xbox One may not have a large volume of exclusive games released for the system, with many titles also releasing for Windows PCs, but there are at least a handful which didn't see a port. One game which remained exclusive to the console for a long time was Insomniac Games' Sunset Overdrive. Insomniac were typically known for developing games on Sony's PlayStation consoles, but with Sunset Overdrive, the company wanted to retain ownership of the game's brand. This led to Drew Murray and Marcus Smith, the game's creative directors, pitching the game to several publishers. They finally landed a deal with Microsoft, with the tech giant agreeing to fund and publish the title. Smith recalled how the duo's main pitch began, claiming that It started off with us cluing into the speaker system in the conference room and playing the sample from the beginning of MC5's Kick Out The Jams, where it's like not knowing that one of the executives there hates swearing. And then it ended with Drew on top of a chair, mimicking how the game was going to play, and the last minute heroics. It was epic, and I'm shocked they didn't walk away from the table at that point. But for some reason, here we are. Another game that was a console exclusive to the Xbox One for a time was the indie action platformer Cuphead. The game is full of secrets, easter eggs, and references to other pieces of media. One sly nod to The Adventures of Batman and Robin can be found in the boss fight against Werner Vermin. The final phase of the boss fight has players go up against a giant mechanical cat. When the boss is defeated, the face of the cat falls off, just like the mechanical Cheshire Cat boss from Batman and Robin. One series that saw continued releases from the 360 to the Xbox One is Gears of War, or perhaps simply the Gears series. When announcing the fifth entry, Microsoft announced the title as quite plainly Gears 5, dropping the Of War portion of its predecessors. Marketing boss at Xbox, Aaron Greenberg, said the team felt that going with Gears 5 alone would be cleaner and possibly because of the fact most people who refer to the series were already dropping the Of War part. One of the alleged reasons for getting more people to adopt the shorter title was because of social media, with Greenberg joking that the move was to save you room on Twitter. That was the whole idea. Of War's absence can also be seen with the two spin-off titles announced alongside Gears 5, Gears Tactics and Gears Pop. The game's full title wasn't the only thing being dropped from the franchise though, with the first Xbox One entry of the series also having a change in presentation in another form. After the release of Gears 4, and during the run-up to Gears 5, the title's developers, The Coalition, announced they were working with anti-smoking group Truth Initiative to remove all references to smoking within the game. Coalition boss Rod Ferguson knows full well the devastating impact that smoking can have, having lost his father at the age of 38, when Ferguson himself was only four. While some voiced upset that the team had effectively censored themselves, Ferguson wanted to reiterate that the decision to cut the game's ties to promoting smoking wasn't a tough one, stating, Just to clarify, I've always been anti-smoking and have pushed back on having it in Gears since day one. There was no smoking to remove from Gears 4 or 5 because there never was any smoking to begin with. 
and as long as I'm in control, there never will be. Sorry for the confusion. While many were disappointed with Gears 4 and its general shift in tone, many agree the game did contain some fun easter eggs. One of these easter eggs comes from the mouth of fan-favorite character Marcus Phoenix. While exploring Marcus's derelict estate, the player finds a greenhouse filled with tomato plants. After a shootout, if the player proceeds to kill any remaining vines, Phoenix will have a few choice words to share. Long I've worked on this f house alone. You know what it's like being a f hermit, fixing a house. There's no Home Depot out here, you f assholes. F tomatoes. They f my tomatoes up. God damn it. Add that to the fucking list. God damn it. Those are Dom's for Christ's sakes. I grew those from Dom seeds. F those are Dom's goddamn seeds for Christ's sakes. I'm never gonna have a good sauce again. I can't make Dom sauce. Fuck you guys. It's bullshit. And Damon Baird, you're a cock! This Easter egg also makes Dom's Toms available to the player, which are literally tomato grenades. Another Xbox series that, unsurprisingly, saw releases continue on the X-Bone is one of Microsoft's biggest franchises, Halo. This franchise also has its fair share of Easter eggs, and one secret in particular, found in Halo 5, requires an extremely high IQ to understand. Within the multiplayer map Riptide, a strange blue box can be found hidden in one of the stage's botanical development pods. On closer inspection, some big brain players noticed that this is actually a Meeseeks box from the wildly popular Adult Swim series Rick and Morty. Halo 5 has other comical easter eggs, even on its title screen. If players wait on the main menu for about six and a half minutes, a distressed lone grunt will float across the screen. We all know that Microsoft has made missteps in their time, particularly when it comes to their handling of the developers at Rare. The Rare Replay Collection, exclusive to the Xbox One, received wide praise from fans who wanted to revisit several of Rare's classic titles. Much of the compilation works by emulating the various games created for the multiple consoles over the years, with only minor alterations. And Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, and Perfect Dark simply use their XBLA versions. However, out of all of the titles, only one, technically, had to be remastered to work. Grab by the Ghoulies was directly ported to operate using the full technical strength of the Xbox One hardware, recoded to deliver clear upgrades over its earlier OG Xbox version. The original release of Grab by the Ghoulies runs in 480p at 30 frames per second, but with Rare Replay, the game is displayed in full HD at 60 frames per second. One of Rare's other recent, more favorable releases is Sea of Thieves, though it hasn't always been smooth sailing for the swashbuckling adventure. It was originally planned for the player to be charged gold as a penalty for dying by the Captain of the Ferry of the Damned, having to pay more or less depending on how avoidable death was. While this did not include player versus player deaths, the developers still saw backlash from fans unhappy with the idea of adding insult to injury and potentially alienating new players. In the face of this response, executive producer for the title, Joe Neat, took to Twitter to assure players that they had been heard and that the death tax would not be implemented. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia, so today we thought we'd take a look at Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Nitro Fueled did a lot of things right, but also spectacularly angered many players after Activision launched the title without any microtransactions, only to add them after the game had received resounding positive reviews. However, these executive decisions don't negate the love that Beanox clearly demonstrated for the original Crash Team Racing released on the PlayStation. As we've previously mentioned on Digino Gaming Extra, one hidden character found in the original release of Crash Team Racing is Penta Penguin. This character can only be accessed by way of entering a cheat code, and while he is fully playable, albeit without finished stats, the team hadn't quite had the chance to finish implementing the character's voice lines either, with him occasionally changing his voice into a normal man, giving lines such as Penguin Ye one In Nitro Fueled, Beanox included the secret racer, cheat code and all, and from time to time, Penta Penguin will keep his own voice, but still provide the more informative voice line. Penguin A1? I need to talk to you about Chad Barnin. Uh, 
Mark Arvio, just leave the Jerry Cherry pie in the fridge. Trevor Wooten isn't here, Bats. Robert Cox lied to me then. Jackie H. told me you showed up at her house again. Trevor Wooten isn't happy. He sent the Natch after you. I thought it was Vitas Varnas. Mike Sinister tracked you there five times last week. Even the free master gamers know you're obsessed. Chris Littlefield saw you hiding in the tree outside. Impossible. I was invisible. Even a Clefairy or Petite Mew wouldn't spot me. Your boy Beowulf said it was midday. A blind Corey Nelson could have seen you. I was invisible, Jim. Every Lathrop gave me this. You can call Guillermo Chavez. Units Ken 1111 and Error 1355 requested for a Jedostotl 7. Hey, Batman. Huh. Must have gone swimming. Thanks for watching, and thank you to the patrons. As always, they help us out big time. I would have some compliments for the Xbox One, uh, and the only one I have is that it has improved over the years, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a PC gamer, and to be honest, as a PC gamer, I get why you'd buy a Switch, I get why you'd buy a PS4, I just don't get why you'd buy an Xbox One, unless your friends all have one and you just want to play online with them. I appreciate you can play whatever you want, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not like those bloody console war noobs. I think everyone should just be playing games, it doesn't matter on what hardware, as long as you're enjoying yourself. And I hope that you are. I truly hope that you are enjoying yourself right now.